So that is the, uh, the encouragement today is, is for the fathers, uh, not only just uh, physical fathers, but spiritual fathers as well. We have uh, brothers that are uh, single, but uh, they pour in to other young believers, right? You know, and so uh, it, it's a beautiful thing uh, to be a father. Um, and so I, what I would like to do before we start is uh, pray for the fathers. So uh, whether you're a physical father or a spiritual father, you're single, but you still pour in or you still encourage another brother, you know, and they, they look up to you and uh, they, they, because they see Christ, not that they see you, but they see Christ in you, then uh, let's stand and, and, and let's pray for you guys. You know? uh, so all, all fathers, please, uh, please stand. <laughs> Papas, grandpas, fathers, uh, you know. All you, all you men that, that are out there that have a, a special call in your lives, a, a call that is, uh, it, it's a big responsibility. And uh, may, the Lord, uh, may the Lord guide us as we continue to serve him, continue to walk in humbleness. Uh, so let's pray for you. Let's pray for you, myself, and let's come to the Heavenly Father, the one that knows all things. Heavenly Father, we, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, Lord. We ask, Lord Father, that you, Lord, would protect these men, Lord, that you would give them a thirst and hunger for righteousness. Pray, Lord Father, that um, you, Lord, would guide their every thought, Lord, and every action that they may take, uh, especially at home, Lord, and let that transfer to work and with other people, and here at, uh, at the fellowship with us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would use them, guide them, teach them, Lord. And in this fatherhood, we are uh, basically still children learning from you, Father. And so, Lord, I, I pray that you would teach us. I pray that you would guide us, Lord, and show us your ways and not our own ways. Father, I pray that if we are uh, dealing with things in our own with our own hands and our own efforts, Lord, that, that we would surrender that to you and look at what your word says and apply your word in our lives with your Holy Spirit guiding us to your word, Lord. We pray and we ask, Lord, bless these men, Lord, and I pray that today they would leave here being encouraged, Lord, and, and challenged, Lord, and that I would find myself in that same category as being challenged, Lord, and being encouraged through your word, Lord Father. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So uh, I want to talk about first the picture of a worldly father, right? Because we know that um, even worldly fathers can be, in a sense, good, good fathers, right? They work, right? They provide. So that, that is, that is a, a father's already, a father already knows to do that. And even at that, God has given that to them, right? Amen. You know what I mean? Um, a, a father will teach, right? You know, um, a, a father will teach a, a young man or even a child, like, how to, like, fix things, Right? Um, how to uh, maybe even uh, prosper in life financially. Um, so there's good moral fathers out there. There's good men that are out there that are fathers. And a lot of those men put me to shame when I wasn't following the Lord. You know, they, they did, you know, because they were good moral fathers. You know, um, the thing that they, that they have is, uh, it was a love that's called storgi love, which is a family love, Right which is given from God. But there, there is, you know, there's four types of love. You have, uh, you have eros, phileo. Eros is more like an like a intimacy love. Um, you have um, uh, phileo, which is a brotherly love, and storge, storge, which is a family love, right? And if you want to, like, really get into depth and really uh, um, search that out, you, you can. And also Pastor Marco has a teaching in regards to where he talks about that. And um, it, it's really encouraging to know what, what type of love is, is what. But there's this awesome love that only comes from God, and it's called agape. It's, it's an agape love, right? 
And, and this, uh, this love here, it, it, it's a committed love. Okay? It, it's a self-sacrificing love. It's a love that corrects in gentleness and kindness, right? And this agape love is what we have to look at. If we have surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ, and we're dependent, we're dependent on his word, his Holy Spirit guiding us to the scriptures to be active in it, then this love is a love that fathers should look at. Not only that, but mothers as well. You know? But fathers, this is the time to look at that and say, well, what is the difference between this love and storgi, right? And like I said, committed, right? Um, Self-sacrificing, right? Again, correction is important for children. You can't neglect that because the Bible talks about if uh, we spare the rod, we spoil the child, right? And it's in Scripture, um, but also, too, there's also ways, different ways of disciplining people. It doesn't always have to be, well, I'm just going to spank you for everything you do, right? There's got to be a balance to things, um, and the Lord, will, the Lord will guide and show you guys in that kind of way. Um, for myself, as a father, I didn't raise my kids in the way. You know, uh, 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 I didn't raise them in, in the Lord. Uh, I raised them my own way, and terrible. Uh, it did a lot more damage than, uh, you know, than I would have imagined. Um, when I came to the Lord, I seen the damage, you know, and I, I started to learn what agape love really meant and how to be a real good dad and um, how to, uh, you know, learning to be a grandpa, too, now that I'm a, a grandfather. Um, and so uh, I, I wanted to... Uh, Basically, just touch first on, on, on that. You know, it's, it's very important to know that, right, that, you know, when sin entered the world through Adam and Eve, you know, that, that is a thing that just your kid will already know how to do bad things. You don't have to, right, you don't have to teach them how to do those bad things. They already do it. And that's the key, too, because if, they, if, if our behavior is not lining up with Scripture, then it's going to cause them to be even worse, right? You know what I mean? They're going to, they're going to see a, a hypocrisy if our life ain't lining up to what the Word of God says, right? And it does damage because I've, I've, I've been in that situation as well, being raised by a pastor, right? Um, but him not teaching, him not being committed to the family, it, it, it did uh, an opposite effect where I rejected God. I want nothing to do with God. Yet there was a seed planted, you know, I won't take that away from him, you know, um, but, but yet because of his actions and him not loving uh, his family like he should have, it, it led me to despise the things of God. I didn't want nothing to do with God. But God in his grace and his mercy showed me how much he loved me. You know, he showed me who the real father is, and it is God Almighty, right? You know, and he showed me that. And so in his grace, now I'm able to love my wife, right? And I could even, I, I, could, I could love her even more. But I have to be willing to, to be submitted to the scriptures more and more. And so I could be a better father, right? Um, and so another thing that, that, that is uh, important to, to uh, look at is that um, the way a husband, because first we're called to be a husband first, right? Because we're not a father until we're a husband. You know, so if you look at that aspect and you say, well, okay, I'm a father first. Well, I'm a, I'm a husband first and then a father. What, is, what are the children supposed to look at when they look at how you are with your wife, right? They're going to learn from that. If you mistreat your wife and you're not gentle, then the daughter might think, well, I, I guess this is kind of okay. And guess what's going to happen? He's, she's got, she might marry somebody that's just like, or even worse than, than what you are. What about, uh, you know, the, the guy? You know, what about the kid? If he, see, if he sees you being unsensitive and uh, being rude, then how is he going to, he's going to see that and he's going to display the same, the same uh, characteristics to that woman and hurt that woman, you know? Um, so these are things that, that you know, we, we have to look at and um, also to uh, really know what, what the Word of God says. Um, by me saying these things, I'm just giving 
the things that I've seen in my life of uh, what could hurt a family. Um, and, and, and so I've, I've seen it and I've done it myself because I, I didn't uh, want the things of God and I didn't teach my kids in the ways of the Lord. And I also saw somebody that was a Christian but neglected his family. So, so these experiences in, in, in life kind of showed me and, and taught me, like, hey, look, the word of God is serious, and if we apply the scriptures to our life, then uh, we will have peace in our home, right? Um, you know, the godly person, a woman, man, and uh, I would say this falls more on, on a man is to be uh, a peaceful man at home because they're going to be an example. They'll be an example to their wife and to their children. You know, and the Lord has called us to be peacemakers. Whether it's somebody else's fault or not, if uh, somebody is flying off the handle, a kid, a wife, then for our job is to, to calm the situation. Calm it in a way that is glorifying the Lord. Calm it in a way that we're being led of the Spirit according to His Word. To be gentle and kind. So I'm going to jump into Scripture because that talks volumes. I have nothing on what the Scripture says, right? The Scripture is the authority of God. This is the Word. This is uh, what ought to move a Christian for action, right? Through His Spirit. The point is, do not grieve the Holy Spirit because if you grieve the Holy Spirit, He will not guide you in the truth. So that's important that we not grieve the Holy Spirit, you know? If we're constantly... Uh, practicing sin, we're grieving the Holy Spirit, and He's not going to guide you. He's not going to give you understanding according to what the Word of God says. So I'm going to read in Proverbs 24, and uh, I'm going to start in verse 30 through 34. So Proverbs 24, chapter 24, verses 30 through 34. says, I went by the field of the lazy man and by the vineyard of the man devoid of understanding. Some other uh, 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 Bibles, translations will say lack of sense, right? You know, this one says here, this is the New King uh, James. It says devoid of understanding. And there it was all overgrown with thorns. So this field here by a lazy man. There were thorns, it was overgrown. Its surface was covered with nettles. Nettles are weeds. Uh, it's basically a waste land. If you, uh, you look at a field that nobody has attended, you look at a, a field that is left alone, it just looks junky. There's weeds, they're all burned up, and it's not a place that you would want to settle down in, right? You know, when you look at a place that's been attended, you know, maybe some, a, a, a garden, uh, maybe a, a field with green grass. You know, you almost want to throw a blanket on there, right, and then have a picnic, you know, and enjoy, um, you know, this field, you know, this vineyard, right, you know. So this place is just, it's beat down. Not only that, but it says its stone wall was broken down. When I saw it, I considered it well. I looked on it and received instruction. And uh, here... Uh, Solomon says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So shall your poverty come like a prowler and your need like an armed man. So here we got something that is devastating. He didn't attend his home, right? He didn't attend his field, right? In a sense, let's look at it and considering it your place, your home. Right? Let's look at it in, that, in the spiritual sense of what's going on in this place. There is no fruit. There is nothing but weeds, thorns, right? You know? And um, so this could be the case in many family, in many homes. You know, this could be somebody that maybe says, well, look, I work and I support my family. I come home and I play with my kids. Um, I come home and I, you know, it's, I teach them, right? You know, um, I love them. Yeah, for sure. You love them, right? 
Um, but are you being that servant that God has called you to be, right? Because we could come home and just say, all right, I'm done from work. I'm going to kick it. I'm going to hang out. Just relax. And I'm not going to ask my kids, hey, how was your day today? Look, you know, God loves you. What are you going through? You know, as a kid, there were so many things going on in my head, so much confusion in my mind as a kid. Your kids are going through those things, you know? Maybe, you know, that started happening with me when I was probably 10, 11, 12 years old. A lot of questions, a lot of things, and, but nobody was there to talk to, talk with me. Nobody was there to, in a sense, disciple, right? Um, so the home was a wasteland, broken, a sluggard, thinking that he was doing God's will, right? You know what I mean? Ignorant of what the Word of God teaches, right? So that, that's the, the, the key. Are, are we being ignorant and just not applying what we must apply in scriptures. This, this message, I was, we called it um, a call, uh, a father's call, uh, a father's call, and then it was a father's call of duty, and then I looked into call of duty, right? You know, there's, there's men that, that have been in the armed services, right? And so the term is more, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Brother Gerhardt, but it's, it's beyond the call of duty. Am I Correct? Is it like beyond? Is it more, more uh, giving more than just being there with the with the machine gun? It's actually even protecting your friends that are there with you. You know, so it, yeah. So it's a it's a it, that's right. You know, and so it's the same way um, in 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 our families' lives. It's to strive to to protect them, watch over them. Um, you come home, the wife is tired from watching the kids. You know what I mean? Maybe, hey, baby, let me, let me help you up by washing the dishes. You know what I mean? You know, for me and my wife, my wife is always worked, you know? So me and her work. So I'll say, hey, look, let me go ahead and wash the dishes and help you out because I know that the other days you're going to be busy washing, uh, you know, folding the clothes and sweeping or whatever it may be. So the thing I need to do is like, okay, let me help her out. I'm, I'm not done. I came from home from work, and I probably work harder than her, Right, because my job is a little bit more harder than hers, but still, I need to continue to help out. You know, um, you know what I mean. And so, these are things, right? That 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 you know, we have to go beyond, right? But not only that, like that. That's a that a lot of other guys, a lot of other men do that already. Like they don't need to be Christians to do that. You know what I mean? They already do it. You know, um, what's the important thing that God has called us to do is is to wash our wives with the Word, right? to uh, cherish them, right? Nourish and, and cherish. It's like your own body. You nourish it, you cherish it. And I, and I talk about that because, be, because that's going to that's gonna pour down to your children because they're going to see that. You know, I talked about it earlier, right, about how uh, your daughter and your sons are going to, your daughters and your sons are going to see that behavior, you know. And so here we have a, a, a place that is in ruins, um, a sluggard, uh, I call it stop slacking, right? Talk is cheap. That's, and, and I say those things for me. You know, I always, when I say those things, I'm saying them for me and for those that, that listen as well. You know, talk is cheap, right? The word of God is the word of God. Are, are we going to live it out or are we just going to talk about it and not uh, be ready for action, you know? And you, and, and you guys are, are fathers, grandpas, right? Uh, spiritual fathers, um, it's it's time, it, it, you know the the way that the world is going and it has been, but even more so now, the return of Christ is, is imminent. It, he's coming, and so we have to get things right according to the Word of God and not according to our own understanding. Uh, the Book of Proverbs in chapter three talks about if we lean on our own understanding, it says it's evil and it's wicked, you know, and you'll find yourself like myself if you're. If you're a human being like me, you'll find yourself seeing the evil of leaning on your own understanding and saying, I got to repent from this, you know. And so um, what I wanted to um, also read is, is in uh, Romans uh, 13, you know, Romans uh, chapter 13, verses 8 through 12.
So here, uh, Apostle Paul is, is talking about loving your neighbor, um, you know, as yourself. And he bunches in uh, um, all, these, all these sins, you know. And he says, if you fulfill this one, then you'll fulfill all of, all of them, you know. And it says, it's, it says in uh, Romans 13, verse 8, it says, Oh, no one any, anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. It says, For the commandments say, You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, they're all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Now, we know a lot of times when we read this, we're like, oh, okay, love my neighbor. I'm going to love you guys. I'm going to love the people at work. I'm going to love the lost, right? But who is, like, your neighbor? If your wife or your husband is sitting right next to you, right, that's your first neighbor right there, you know? That's where you have to start to practice these things because if you don't, then you ain't going to be able to love other people. That's the honest truth. It might be uh, a show of it, right? And what is that? What is, it's a different kind of face. You're showing with other people, but at home, you're not. So what is that, what is that word we use for that? Hypocrisy, right? So... When we read things like this, we have to consider who is right by us, who lives with us, who sees all our flaws. I wake up and my hair is all like, Phew. I got all the stuff on my eyes. <laughs> my wife looks at me and she looks at me with, <laughs> with love. And I'm like, you still like what you see right now? <laughs> like, whoa, right? But, but beyond that, there's, there's, you know, that's just an, an analogy of, of what's inside our hearts, our, our, our wife and our children will see what's in the depths of us when they see us not uh, applying the word of God, right? You know? And uh, so, uh, so this, is, this is something that when I read it, I was like, hey, man, I could, I could definitely say that this is talking about my wife, my children, right, first, uh, my brothers in Christ, you guys, um, the people I work with, the loss that I, uh, you know, bump into. Um, but if I don't apply it at home, it don't make sense, right? That's a, a man unstable in his ways, basically. That's a man that is a, a sluggard, a slacker. He talks a talk, but it's not applying it at home. And so, you know, today is not, I don't, um, I, I don't come to try to, like, harass you guys or, or beat you guys in regards to this, because I know a lot of you guys are already, um, you know, applying the word of God. But, but I know that um, as children, we are all children, and we have a heavenly Father. We could, we could still learn more. You know, um, if we say that we've already attained and I already understand what it means to love my wife, then I'm basically placing myself as Jesus Christ in a sense. You know what I mean? You know, because He's the one that you know, loves. His love is beyond ours. We could love like him, but we, we could learn to love more, right? We could learn, learn to, uh, to display his characteristics. Sorry, characteristics. Ah, there it is. Good. But his attributes, right? You know, uh, we, could, we could learn to, to, uh, to basically take that example and say, I, I, I want to be more like you, God, you know? Um, I'm going to fail. Yeah, definitely. We're going to fail, you know, um, but the main thing is that we would turn from our failings and continue to strive to be obedient to the word of God. You know? And so loving our neighbor, your neighbor is those in your household. By loving your neighbor, neighbor you're not going you're, you're, you're to treat your wife or, or your children as saying, oh, you see, you guys can't do nothing right. You're dumb. You're this. You know, I have to do everything. You know, you're not going to do those things. You know, because if you do do those things and you, 
even if you don't say it and you just think it, you're wrong. It's wrong. It's, it's wrong to, to, to think like that. It's wrong to have bitterness in the heart towards your wife and, 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 uh, and hate. Being a dad, oh, I got to come home now, and these kids are all, they're driving me crazy. Oh, like, I understand frustrations. I understand that. But if, but if you can't enjoy your kids, if you can't enjoy them, and, and then there, there's a serious problem there, you know, and it needs to be corrected, you know. Um, so uh, there's a, a call here in the rest of the, uh, the verses we're going to read, um, and I'm going to read from 11 to uh, 14. I'll, I'll go to 10. It says, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law, right? And it says, and do this knowing the time, that now it is high time. It says on this one here, but in, on others it says uh, it is the uh, last hour, I believe, right? And it says, uh, now is the hour to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, and the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust. Here's, here's the other two, uh, another word that is very important. Not in strife. Um, other scriptures say quar quarreling and, and envy or jealousies. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Strife, is there strife at home? Is there jealousies at home? You know? He puts these things together with drunkenness, lewdness, lust. So these are, this is sin too. Striving, you know, uh, constant arguing at home where there is no peace, there is no joy. Basically, you're basically spiritually bankrupt. You, you don't have no joy of the Lord, you know? You, you don't have the, the riches uh, of God, the blessed, the blessed riches that we ought to have because the Lord says that we have to have peace, even through turmoils, right? Even through struggles. The Lord says that we have to have joy, that we must be uh, men and women that rejoice, you know? And if, that's not, if you can't rejoice... At home, with encouraging your children, your wife, then basically you're, what we just read in Proverbs, that's what your house is looking like. And so the cause, wake up, right? You know, it says, and do this knowing the time, right? That it is high time to wake out of our sleep. And that's the call. That's the call of God telling us, hey, let's get it together. What do we have against us here in this dark world right now, right? You see the chaos that's going on. You know, they just did a live on TV, the gay parade. Do you see what your kids are going to face here in the future? They're already facing it. How much more worse is it going to be for them? You know, when all this darkness is just open for them to look at and see. So the important the importance is that, is that we wake up, right? You know, it says, to wake out of the sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The Lord is coming. His, his return is imminent, and he is on his way. And we are in this dark world, right? But we ought to be light. The night is far spent, and the day is at hand. The night is far spent. You already spent your time in darkness, haven't you? Right? Well, is the light in you? Have you received Christ? You have, right? So let's continue to put on Christ, right? And then we'll continue to read. And it says, therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Pastor Marco taught in Ephesians about the armor of God, you know? Same, same concept, armor of light. You know, when, you have, when you're clothed in Christ Jesus and you have the truth, the belt of truth, and you have the helmet of salvation and you have the breastplate of righteousness and you have the shield of faith and you have 
the, uh, the, the, um, the sandals of peace, right? And then you have your sword, right? You're representing light. You're representing Christ. You know what I mean? And remember that God is holy, right? And he's perfect and he is light. So remember that light, a bright light on darkness will, will kind of blind them in a sense, you know? Just like when Jesus appeared to uh, Paul, Saul of Tarsus, the one that would kill Christians, he was blinded because he was in darkness, right? So put on that armor of light in this dark world. Enough of the touching the things of the world that, that are not going to guide you into um, holiness. They're going to lead you into corruption. And then you won't be able to see the truth. And so these are things that are important for us, man, because this honest truth, this world, is, is, it is bad. And if there is no hope, if they, you know, it, Christ is the hope. He is the hope. But we have a responsibility to live out the word of God. You guys heard the truth by a, by a person that told you about Jesus. Then God was drawing you, right? At, even at that moment, using that person, as if that person was being a servant. Are you being that servant? Are you living out the word of God so that your children could see, so that they would be prepared when they see all this chaos and all this crazy things that are happening? You know? And um, I, I really liked, uh, you know, how he said, put on the armor of light. Because when you think about that, you think about God's light, it scares away the darkness. It even scares away the demonic realm. You know what I mean? You don't have to go, you don't have to start to, re, you know, rebuke it and try to, you, 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 you live out the gospel and you preach the word. And then people will be, you know, demons will be like, oh man, this guy's walking with the Lord. You know, I can't really, you know, I can't. And then you'll be effective to other people around by preaching the gospel and living out the word of God. You know, so I really liked when he, he says that, put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, right? And it says, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, right? Because those things back in that time, it wasn't really too open. It was more done at nighttime. Those things back in those times, all the... All the uh, lewdness, the uh, revelry, drunkenness, and all that stuff was done more towards the nighttime. And so it's like live like it's in the day. You know, he gives a, dis uh, uh, a different, uh, um, uh, there's a difference that he's explaining basically. Don't live like the these people do. Live as in the day, right, where people don't do those kind of things, you know, um, at, in the daytime. But also, too, it's like if we have Christ, that's our call. As Christians, to live out, um, to live out, to uh, live out a Christian life, um, to walk in His ways, you know. And it says, uh, "It says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for, for the flesh to fulfill its lust." And um, you know, that's that's the thing is is uh, sometimes uh, you know our our carnal, the the dead carcass we carry around, right? It's dead and stinking and attracts things. And not only that, um, you know, the old man wants to pop out here and there, right? You know, and, um, and we, have to, uh, we have to put on Christ because if we don't put on Christ, if we don't depend on his holiness, then we're going to entertain and we're going to fulfill the lusts and we're going to fall short, you know. And if that happens, you know, we have to repent. We can't stay in, in that and just kind of say, well, I can't change, so I'm just going to stay here and just continue in this sin. You'll just be miserable. And if you continue even longer and you don't listen to God because he loves you and he'll want to correct you, and if you just continue, you'll just become worse and worse and worse. And those are the dangers, right, of, uh, uh, of being uh, a slacker and not, not putting on Christ and not loving, you know. If we're slackers, that's what's going to happen. We're going to fulfill our flesh and the wants and desires that this dead, dead man wants, you know. They want to 
wants to make it come alive, but we have to crucify our flesh. We have to carry the cross, right? We say, get on that cross and crucify those desires, you know? And it's only in Christ that you can do that, not within yourself. So, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, there's, there's so many wake-up calls. We listen to, um, you know, the Word of God, and God is always challenging and correcting us. But yet, um, just people just listen, but they don't apply the Word of God. And that's the danger of, of, uh, of, you know, us, right, having to, you know, we could listen, you know, but yet when we leave, we don't apply the word of God, you know. Um, and then that, that could, we could be deceived. We could be deceiving ourselves and thinking, well, I go to church on Sunday. I go to church on Wednesday. I go evangelize, right? And we could be deceiving ourselves um, and thinking that I'm good, you know, but I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not applying the scriptures um, here. Uh, first off, with my neighbor, which would be my wife, my children, um, and then my brothers and sisters, you know what I mean? Um, being gentle, being kind, loving them. And we could just hear it, and we could, again, we could come to church and listen, but then we won't take no action. And the scriptures always talk about uh, being active, and and it talks about the word is active. It's sharper than a, than a double-edged sword, right? And it penetrates the depths of our heart, you know, and it challenges us. So if, you, if we're being challenged, praise God, man. If you're being challenged, man, the Lord loves you. You know, the Lord is bringing the scriptures uh, to, your, to the depths of your heart, and, and, and you're going to want to say, you know what, let's follow. And same here, same thing. You know, I sit here and I listen to Pastor Marco, and um, I have challenged. You know, and it, it, it just it help it helps me. You know, it helps my family. You know what I mean? Because if it's helping me and it's challenging me to grow, then you know what I mean. Family's gonna see that, and then they're gonna be challenged as well because they see the action. They see this man is living out the scriptures. Um, do I fail? Yeah, I do. Ask my wife. <laughs> my wife's right there. She won't lie about me. Um, you know, I, I fail, but what do I do with that? You know, she knows what I do. Ask her, talk to her, you know. Um, there's things that, you know, that, that I could do that could be harsh towards her, you know. Um, when she talks to me, sometimes I ignore her. That, that, could, that could be harsh for a woman, right? You know, you're, oh, are you ignoring me? Like, I'm not important in this life. Everybody else is important in this life, but not me. See what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, so that could be harsh, right, you know. <laughs> Oh, she, she, you know, it's like, oh, you just, all you hear is blah, 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 right? And I'm like, no, not all the time. <laughs> but, but we're challenged, right, to, uh, you know, to, to be there and listen and, and, and love her and, and apply the word of God, you know. Um, it, it's a beautiful thing. Um, I, I got 10 minutes. I don't want to keep you guys here long. I have a lot still. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to... Um, I'm going to read like four or five verses in Genesis, and then I'm going to um, go ahead and, and uh, give you a chapter in Deuteronomy to read for you guys to, to, to be challenged and, and do, your, do your work. It, those that love a challenge, you know what I mean? You guys, you, you know, read it, read it. Um, but I'm going to go to Genesis chapter 5, and uh, I'm going to look at uh, um, Enoch. For a little bit, and then, uh, and this will be quick. This should be ten minutes, and then, and I don't want to. Uh, I'll keep you guys here for another two hours. No, I'm <laughs> so let's look at Genesis, uh, Genesis five, verse twenty-one. All right. So here's talking about the family of Adam, you know, and it, verse twenty-one of chapter five says. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. So if we walk with God, he's going to take us, right? Enoch here 
is being an example. Enoch here is being a man of God. He's walking with God. It's an action we must take. And then I'm going to jump right now to uh, 6, Genesis 6, and we're going to look at his great-grandson. So you guys can see the effect of what a man can have on his family. So let's go to Genesis 6, verse 8 through 9. We're going to see who his great-grandson was. It says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. He was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? So we see the impact of Enoch on his great-grandson, Noah. Noah walked with God. He was just and he was perfect. Do you see the example that we have in our, in our children's walk? In their eyes? Well, we could speak a lot of things that could be true. But things that are caught with the eye are more valuable than things that are taught with the tongue. See what I'm saying? We could teach, we could say, right? But when people see you in action, that's what's going to make the difference. You know? And so that's what happened here, right? His uh, Enoch's children saw him walking with God. They saw him walking with God. They, they even told their grandson, great-grandson, because I don't believe, uh, I did some math, and I, I don't believe that Noah was, uh, Noah saw Enoch. You know, I did some math, and I, I might be wrong with my math, um, but I don't, he didn't see it. He did hear his, uh, he did hear, right? Faith comes from hearing, right? You know, and I'm sure that he heard God took him. Like, wow, God just took him? Like, he didn't die? Like, he didn't, God just, oh, I got to walk. I got to walk. I, I hear this. I heard this from my, from my dad, you know, from my grandpa. And they talked about my great-grandfather, Enoch, you know. And so it says that he was a just and perfect man about Noah. He walked with God. Not only that, people, his, even his father saw something in him. If you really look at, it says uh, that even, um, was it, yeah. so Lamech, right, said, um, he said, he says about Noah, this one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. See what I'm saying? So it's like, whoa, like, even, the, even uh, Noah's father knew that this would be, that Noah would be a, 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 go, a godly man, just and perfect, you know? And so um, those are things that I want to leave with you guys. Um, and uh, I told you guys that I would give you a little bit of a, a chapter to read. Um, you know, have a good time with, with, with your children. Uh, you know, fathers, love your wives, love your children. Be that example. Be that godly example. Um, uh, don't waste your time on things that are not going to profit your family. And we, guys, we know what it is. I don't need to say what, what, what is taking, taking you away from your family. Uh, you know, there's things that we know already, you know what I mean, that could take us away, you know. And so at that time, we could spend time uh, applying the scriptures in our life in front of our kids, right, you know what I mean? and doing what God has uh, commanded us to do. Now, uh, Deut Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6 is for you guys um, when you're alone. And, and women read it too because it, it's good. It's challenging. Uh, this is not only for the men but also uh, my sisters that I love, sisters that are uh, just uh, they're beautiful unto the Lord, you guys that, that are seeking Christ. You know what I mean? There's a beautiful inner, inner beauty about you guys, and uh, the Lord, may the Lord uh, 
continue to, to guide you guys and, uh, and for you guys to pray for, for your husbands, pray, pray for your children, and pour into them, you know. Um, but yeah, Deuteronomy 6, that's for you guys to, to look at. I'm going to pray, and uh, thank you guys. Um, thank you guys for listening. Uh, I thank the Lord for the, the opportunity uh, that he gives me to, to be able to um, encourage my brothers and my sisters. Um, it's only through his grace uh, that we can, right, that, uh, you know, we don't have our own, we don't have strength of our own, but through Jesus Christ, we could, uh, we could fulfill what he wants, his will in our lives, you know. And so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, for your word and your truth, Lord. Lord, let your truth, Lord, just uh, make us tremble, Lord. Make us desire to, uh, to want to follow, Lord, follow your word and, and, and be godly uh, fathers, godly husbands, godly men, godly uh, spiritual fathers to those that are watching us, Lord. Everything we, we say or do, our, our, our uh, brothers and, and sisters that are, that are there, they, they watch it, Lord. So, so help us, Lord, to resemble, Lord, uh, your attributes, your characteristics, Lord, and, and help us, Lord, Father, to, uh, to be obedient, to obey, Lord. Your word always talks about disobedience and obedience, disobedience and obedience, and you want, you say that true worship is obedience, Lord. That is true worship, Lord. Um, Father, your son, Jesus Christ, said that there would be a day that true worshipers would worship me in spirit and truth. And uh, this, is, this is that time, Lord, the time when you came and you died and you rose. That From that point on, Lord, um, we, we are to worship with you in spirit and truth, Lord, Father. And that's being obedient and faithful to your word. And when we do sin, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would correct us, that we would repent and turn to you, Lord, for your strength to continue to work in us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.